Asian countries have been living with the coronavirus outbreak for months. And one of the first lessons people learned here is don't panic. We're not panicking. We're probably a little bit frustrated um, because it is disruptive. As you can see here in Seoul, life still goes on. But if you're just beginning to face a coronavirus epidemic, get ready for some serious disruption. All across Asia, sports, concerts, church services, any event involving large gatherings has either been canceled or seriously altered. In Japan, for example, they're playing professional baseball in empty stadiums. In Asia, coronavirus triggered the world's biggest work from home experiment. I think working from home for us has been a huge success. It's raised questions for us around, you know, do we need the size of office space that we've got? Employees are literally phoning it in, working by video conference and avoiding travel. Meanwhile, many parents have to take care of kids at home because cities like Hong Kong have closed schools for months. Understandably, there's a lot of concern right now, so governments have a responsibility to be transparent. Early on in the crisis, the Chinese government attempted to silence experts who tried to sound the alarm. That hurt the government's credibility and spread distrust. The experts agree a key to stemming the outbreak is personal hygiene. Infection control by people uh, wearing masks, uh, and also by hand hygiene, uh, hand rub with uh, alcohol swab. Many coronavirus carriers have mild symptoms, so it's vital to identify those who have this contagious disease by testing for it. The important is for uh, early diagnosis and early isolation and early treatment, uh, the mainstay of uh, uh, isolation and prevention of this uh, infection from spreading. The coronavirus outbreak is a global phenomenon, so chances are you will feel some impact. But no matter what the inconvenience, remember the most important thing going forward is to stay healthy. Ivan Watson, CNN, Seoul. Travel restrictions, canceled trips, and soaring fears of a pandemic. The coronavirus scare could be the worst crisis for the travel industry since the September 11th attacks. Experts say the industry is already taking a huge hit, and it's just the beginning. A Kaiser Family Foundation survey found one in eight people have already changed their travel plans due to virus concerns. There's also been a sharp drop in travel across the Pacific, not just to and from China, but also to other Asian countries. That drop is seen in both leisure and business travel. Several major conferences are canceled, including Facebook's F8 conference, the Geneva Motor Show, and ironically, the ITB Berlin, the leading trade show for the travel industry itself. And experts say millions of workers could lose their jobs or have their hours cut if demand continues to dwindle. The coronavirus scare is also affecting how some companies are doing business, with some of them discouraging non-essential travel for employees. A survey of 400 businesses by the Global Business Travel Association found nearly half of the businesses have canceled or postponed at least some meetings or travel. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. This road would normally be full of cars slowly creeping forward towards checkpoint 300, the main crossing point between Bethlehem and Jerusalem. On the other side of that is Israel, but it's not the weather keeping people away. The city is on lockdown after seven cases of coronavirus were identified here Thursday. Early in the morning, CNN saw Mohammed al azza sitting defiantly outside his shop selling souvenirs for tourists. I will try today, he told us, but if there's no one, then I'll have to close for a month. When we went back 90 minutes later, Mohammed had already packed up and gone home. Up the road, Banksy's iconic Waldorf Hotel was shuttered. No guests to welcome today. Overnight, the Bethlehem municipality put this video on their Facebook page, showing the city being disinfected, including Manger Square, the tourist heart of the city. On Friday, the Church of the Nativity, seen as the birthplace of Jesus, was closed. The little door through which most worshippers enter the church firmly shut. 
On the other side of the square, the Omar Ben Khatib Mosque stood empty as well. Friday prayers, the most important of the week, canceled. 19-year-old Mustafa was one of the few out and about. Whatever God wants will happen, but I don't think people are overreacting. We should take care of ourselves. A few miles away in neighboring Bejala, we found the security tape still up outside the Angel Hotel, the center of the outbreak here, which is being linked to a Greek tour group who stayed last week, one of whose number tested positive for coronavirus on his return to Greece. Fourteen Americans, including 13 from the Three Circle Church in Fairhope, Alabama, who arrived in town at the start of the week on a tour of the Holy Land, have been told to self-quarantine. We were asked to come back to the hotel. We did. And we've been quarantined here for two days, and we just got tested for the virus. When it comes to the question of what is going to happen next, the resounding uh, answer for us is we just don't know. And that's the hardest part the not knowing. We don't know. We don't know what our tests are going to come back as. We do want the authorities to give us more information and we want to know what's going on and we want to be able to go home as soon as possible. One man who was happy to go about his business was Jamil Azar, who was filling his car with gas. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what you published. Put this up on the screen, Catherine. This all suggests that COVID-19 is a relatively benign disease for most young people and a potentially devastating one for the old and chronically ill, albeit not nearly as risky as reported. Why the disparity, doctor, between what transpired on the Diamond Princess and the WHO number or that which is coming out of China? It's a great question, and it all comes down to actually what you measure, what you test. And, you know, economists do this and doctors do this. And so if you test, if you only have 10 test kits in your whole hospital, you're going to take them to the ICU and you're going to say, here, here are my sick patients and let's test them. And, of course, the fatality rate among the 10 patients in the ICU would be pretty high and very scary. But then if you have an influx of 100 new test kits, maybe now you can test the whole hospital. And you will actually pick up many, many more cases but not that many more deaths because those people were okay or they picked up this virus perhaps and not even, don't even have a symptom from it. And then maybe you have a thousand kits so you can test the friends and neighbors. This is what they're doing in South Korea. And actually that's kind of what they did on the Diamond Princess, if you think about it, they tested everybody. And so widespread testing in a situation like this is very important. And the reason is really, like, it's really twofold. Number one, it gets us better numbers that reflect what's really happening. That might help us ramp down our fears because we're gonna pick up more cases that we didn't know about, the ones who have no symptoms or mild symptoms. And that's really important to ramp down our fears, to make ourselves feel reassured that this is not so much of a problem for everybody. And yet, on the same token, it helps us with recognizing those cases to say to those individuals, please, if you do have this virus, if you do come down with it, those are the people who need to isolate from the elderly. I wouldn't recommend, if you have an illness right now, going to a nursing home because that's where you could really cause a problem like we're seeing in Washington. So the disparity between the numbers has to do with your testing strategy. And the fact that in this country, we actually, surprisingly or unsurprisingly, we were really caught flat-footed here. We saw this coming, and yet there's not enough test kits available. That's not tenable because we need to actually okay. have more testing. And and that's what they did in South Korea, by the way, Michael. And their numbers are actually so much better. They have a 0.6% fatality rate in South Korea because they tested so many people.